Uh, and we're going to start out. Uh, Scotty, I'm going to let you start this one out. I'm going to get a code yellow. I'm going to get uh, some other things prepped real quick because we got the hot one chip challenge coming up real fast. It's, it's, it's starting to get closer and closer. And I'm starting to get a little nervous. So I'm going to go get a couple things situated. Code yellow in the chat. Get started on Julius Brent's K, uh, quarterback out of Kansas State. 6'3", 198, 4, 5, 3, 40. You got him comp to Trayvon Diggs. Yeah, um, looking at this guy, you see the size immediately. Like, for a corner, 6'3", he's got long arms, uh, almost 34-inch arms. That's big, guys. Uh, those are big arms. Uh, elite. No, no, I'm going to stop. Uh, great in man coverage, uh, is aggressive, can do, you know, press at the line. Um, you know kind of like and is great in awareness and zone coverage did a great job there comp him to Trayvon Diggs uh 453 that that might be the slowest 40 time that we have at any of these eight corners uh similar to Trayvon Diggs not like elite um straight line speed potential to get beat over the top um similar to what Trayvon Diggs has like listen Trayvon Diggs has been phenomenal for the Cowboys don't get me wrong but he has been prone to to get beat over the top at times. Um, but if you love a, a guy, um, I, I would probably, if I'm drafting him, I'd be a team that probably leans a little more zone heavy, a little more cover three, similar to, you know, your old Seattle Seahawks, maybe, you know, similar to um, Richard Sherman type corner out there that can, can play in the zones, be aggressive, physical, um like him a lot uh he falls in at number eight by the way like i think this this corner cat class is definitely better than the wide receiver class especially at the top like it would not surprise me if we saw at least three corners come off the board before we have a wide receiver come off the board at all i um, in this draft we we got some some you know two to three guys that might go top 10 uh, and and certainly probably two guys and maybe a third will will be early teens I think in my mind, but Julius Brents the the biggest corner I think we have here but also the slowest so you know you give a little you take a little you know does that make sense I don't know I'm just trying to keep it PG. He, he's yeah. You don't want to scare off Diacola again. Yeah. No. No. Diacola's like I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, Richard Sherman. Vibes, it's okay. We sure. still we still got to get to number one before we uh, end up getting into the one ship pocky challenge here. So uh, you got some time, D Cola. Um, I've also seen uh, comps to like Jeff Akuda, if you're still here, um, Chairman. So corner, uh, highly drafted corner for uh, the Lions a couple years back that has had some injury issues. Richard Sherman vibes. Do the top I, yeah, I NFL teams that. play zone? Uh, depends on the team. Some do. Some Not don't. really. No, I disagree with that. Like, Dude, like I still think, Mike, I, think San, I think San Fran was the number one defense in the league last year, and I still think they play a ton of zone. I mean, I feel like they mix, like they mix it up a good bit. Yeah, but like, yeah, I mean, everybody mixes it up, but I think they're zone dominant. Yeah. I think they play more zone than they do man. Like the the Chiefs historically have been very man heavy. Yeah. Um, they're more a man. That's just it's kind of depends on your corner or your your coordinator and as well as like, you know, your personnel. Like hopefully if you have a good coordinator, you're you're matching who your personnel is and where, you know, those best fits are. Yeah. Next up, number seven, DJ Turner, Michigan corner, 5'11, 178, 4, 2, 6, 40. Darius Butler is the player comp here. And uh, yeah, Scotty, what do you think here as far as what he can bring to um, any team that potentially can draft him? I believe where's um, where's where's his player? I think he's uh, his draft position is. Let me find it here. He's looking at around you know, between rounds three and four is what I'm seeing here projected. Depending he'll be on, than that. I, can, uh, I he's he'll go second round. And I mean, it, Chris. prior to the. Prior to the combine, he had gone under the radar, but you know there were some team sources who said they really liked him. He has strong 2022 season, 36 tackles, interception, 10 pass breakups, two interceptions, and seven breakups, and 33 tackles in 2021. 
Um, he's undersized, but at the same time, um, you know, he, he, he's, he, not, he's 5'11". That's not, that's I mean, fine. He's, he's fine. That's, um, not, that's, that's average. But he, he, he is speedy. So, um, but yeah, he could be potentially end up a second day pick, uh, depending on, uh, if, if teams like him enough, but, uh, yeah, that's where we kind of have him slotted here. Scotty. What do you got? Um, I mean, at four two six, so obviously a burner, Chris. Um, elite, elite speed, which is never a bad thing to no. draft. Um, you know, yeah, uh, did a great job for one of the best defenses in the country with Michigan. Um, I think you said ten. I have him at eleven breakups, uh, past past breakups. No big deal. That's close. That's close. close there. Yeah. Uh, elite footwork, very twitchy. Uh, you know, can get in and out of you know elite man coverage getting in and out of breaks quickly with that with that speed um at 178 he is on the 511 isn't too short but 178 he's he's skinny um might struggle at times with tackling uh might have problems against your bigger if you if you put him on the outside against your physical bigger body wide receivers that might just run like slants on him all day and you know box him out because he's not going to get around there um which could put but, him in the slot a lot of times, right? Defending in the slot, most likely. Yeah, I mean, a lot of teams might see him as like a nickel, nickel corner in the slot. Um, but he can play. He can play zone as well. He he did it at Michigan. Uh, showed some pretty good awareness there. Um, but I don't know. I think he's gonna go. I think he's a second round guy. We'll we'll see what happens, even with that size. But it's hard to ignore that forty time, Chris. Oof, burner. He's a burner. Um. Number six on our list, Deontay Banks, uh, corner, Maryland, six foot, 197, 43540. Uh, Jamel Dean is the player comp for Deontay. Um, Scotty, what do you like about Deontay? Why does he stand out? And why is he at, here at number six? Yeah, um, this guy's a little more, he, he's a physical, well built six foot almost 200 pounds that's good size he's he's very much an elite on the athleticism side four three five forty that's for 95th percentile he's 98th percentile in vertical jump 99th in broad jump so this is one of the best athletes at the corner position and in the draft in general um he, he played both press and off coverage and had the twitchy movement skills and was able to to cover and stick to receivers pretty nicely i like this guy um quite a bit uh jamel dean uh for tampa's had a great you know career super bowl winning cornerback i also saw you know shades of like a you know high high if he hits like ceiling ceiling marsh on Lattimore, um because he's just an athletic freak great size good size and athlete athleticism um the one thing that showed up on table like a little bit is like he he's a little grabby so he gets, you know, got to learn to use those hands a little less so that he's not called for for uh, a bunch of, you know, holding calls or pass interference or whatever it may be in the NFL. Um, but that's that's more just like, you know, getting a little lazy or maybe lack of awareness at times. Um, but he uses that physicality and at times that it, that turns into grabbing further down the field than he should. Yeah, I mean, he's natural. Uh, I mean, he has good speed, height, strength, quick feet, agility. He's got a little bit of everything, very fluid with how he plays. Um, and, I mean, he's going to be potentially, you know, mid-first round into, you know, second round, uh, depending on uh, things going uh, certain, you know, dr dr things dropping uh, certain at points in the draft. So I think that there's some, I, some value that you could have uh, I think he needs to be a little bit more. I think a, a couple of scouts have said he needs to be more disciplined in coverage. Quarterbacks and receivers can test his discipline with double moves. I mean, as far as, you know, lack of uh, lack of discipline might bite in on some of those and maybe give up some big plays. But overall, I mean, he produced as a freshman, recording 28 tackles and an interception, two passes broken up. Sophomore, he only played five games due to COVID. Um, and, you know, he had 11 tackles with a breakup. So, um, and then he had a shoulder injury, uh, 2022, he recorded 38 tackles and an interception, eight pass breakups. So he's been pretty consistent when he's on the field. He just needs to be on the field. So, um, overall, I think he's 
he he can run downfield with speedy receivers. He can be pretty efficient in that front too. But yeah, um, otherwise, I think he's still going to get a good value here uh, for Deontay out of Maryland. Number five, Lee Ringo, corner, Georgia, 6'2", 207, 4'3", A little, little quick there. Uh, mm -hmm. Namdi Asamoa is the player comp here. Uh, Klepp loves Namdi in the chat. Hey, Namdi, 426 <laughs> is blazing. Uh, yeah, Chairman, for yeah. sure. 436 isn't bad either. <laughs> um, so 207 with this guy. Yeah. Uh, Ringo, Ringo Star. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, and that's the only other Ringo I know. Uh, <laughs> project to go, uh, either mid to late first into the second potentially uh 41 tackles two interceptions seven passes broken up in 2022 uh he's big he's fast uh he has some stiffness which i think a lot of people have mentioned over the course of his evaluations uh through the combine and through you know just watching him play a little bit but um you know i think that he could be a good fit for the right team uh scotty what do you think about Ringo? Where can he excel and what teams would really benefit from getting a guy like him? Uh, yeah. I mean, he's another athletic freak. 6'2", 207, 436. Um, an absolute beast of a, of a corner. He's like Chris. He's like the DK Metcalf of corners. Like he's a monster of a human being. Um, he's great at being physical as you'd expect. Um, great tackler in the box. Um, he struggles with lateral agility, Chris, uh, a decent amount. So he's 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 one that is susceptible to just not getting in and out of breaks. Great. Um, he's more like he's gonna get drafted by a zone coverage team. He's he's an elite zone coverage corner, man to man. He could be susceptible to some plays in, in covering these wideouts. Just like you know, DK Metcalf's not exactly your elite route runner quickness and agility laterally um but an absolute specimen this guy's that same way so if you're a zone heavy team you'd be all about him uh you can also you know like he could play some box safety at times like he's big enough to do that um and, and be an asset there because he's a great great tackler um shows all that presence um so i listen Kind of like Nam Namdi had like great moments with the Raiders, right? And then he went to the dream team with the Eagles and he really, really struggled. So a lot of this is going to be team fit. How does he fit with the, you know, what they ask him to do? Yeah. I mean, he's going to be a fit for a press man corner in the NFL, right? I mean, he struggled in the SEC championship when he was like, I mean, he, he almost looked helpless uh, in some of those matchups. I think what Mal Malik neighbors and, and uh, Kayshawn, booty boot boot booty whatever his name was uh, i mean he was struggling uh in that sec championship game so you know i think that you know when it comes to those shifty receivers he's definitely not going to be at an advantage there but overall i mean the intangibles everything else that you talked about the athleticism the size everything i mean he is he's going to be in a good spot uh depending on the situation but yeah uh here you go um uh Left asks, what is a box safety? Box safety is just just a safety that has the physicality and ability to um, play closer to the line of scrimmage and um, coverage you know, linebacker. Yeah, yeah. Well, an elite coverage linebacker, and and you know to help stop the run can still stop the run while playing you know coverage on the if it's a, potentially a pass play. Yeah. All right. Next up, number four. Number four, Cam Smith, corner. South Carolina, 6'1", 180 pounds, 4'4", 5", speed uh, when it comes to the 40. And then we are having a player comp similar to Joe Hayden. Scotty, get us going on Cam Smith. I'll let Rack just talk about Joe Hayden for a little bit. <laughs> um, Let's see. Cam Smith. Um, trying to get my, like thoughts together here no you're good uh actually i mean i could get started here um, go for it uh he's number one corner potential in the nfl i mean he, he's got a lot of upside he's projected to go you know either first second round depending on uh you know maybe later in the first round maybe early second round 
at the latest, but I mean, a lot of his size is adequate. They say he has long arms for a corner who's around six foot. Uh, he recorded 27 tackles and interception, five pass breakups. He was one of the best corners in the SEC the year before, recording 41 tackles, three interceptions, and 11 passes defended. So, you know, overall, I mean, he's definitely got the production value when it comes to uh, what he's been able to do in the SEC. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think overall he's gonna be he's gonna be a guy that can contribute probably day one. Um. First of all, this dude plays with swagger. Like, if you want to be the, like, this is like the most confident player. If you want a tough, defensive minded guy that's going to be, you know, confident and, and rally guys and get in the other team's head potentially, like, this is your dude. Um, he's not, obviously, at 6'1, 180. He's, I mean, height wise is great. He's tall and lengthy, like 180 at 6'1. Certainly a little wire, wiry, not quite the physical presence that we talked about with these last two corners that we just discussed um he's great in man coverage though so he's not necessarily his own guy he's physical um can transition quickly in and out of breaks uh really good ball skills as well so he, he can make plays on the ball and and get some turnovers for you um biggest weakness is he also was susceptible to getting handsy at times um in coverage and, and playing a little too aggressive at times but listen um a really, really talented guy. Uh, he And he follow guys. I mean, South Carolina had him playing inside, outside, slot. Didn't matter. Like, he was playing all over the place, depending on where the number one wide receiver on that other team. And obviously playing in the SEC, he played a lot of elite, elite wideouts. So he played against the best. He held up against the best, which gives you comfort that, like, you know, he's going to be a really, really solid pick for somebody, um, you know, late first early second somewhere around that range yep number three and joey porter jr he's been at the top of some other people's list in this in the corners but we have him at number three penn state corner 6'3 193 446 40 xavier rhodes is the player comp here for mr jr joey porter jr uh, he was steady in coverage, 2022, 27 tackles, 11 passes broken up. Uh, he's an instinct, instinctive corner. I mean, he runs routes, prevents separation. He also possesses long arms, which, you know, with yep. quickness. <laughs> might be his best trait. That, that's one of his it's biggest traits, right? Wildly I mean, long arms. Uh, he has quickness and athleticism to go with that. So pass breaking up passes is going to be kind of his his knack for, uh, you know, everything he's going to do in the NFL. Um so he's not having produced uh, his potential knock on on what I think is going to be an issue is uh, he didn't produce a ton of big plays or interceptions over the course of his career. I mean, he's he's had some stretches, but I mean, he didn't also have teams throwing his direction very much either. So he looks like he's a safe pick to turn around a good NFL, uh, turn into a good NFL starter, realistically. But um yeah, I mean, I think he fits best as uh, kind of a press, press man corner more so than anything else. But uh, he's going to be a first round pick. He's going to be a very, very high end pick. Uh, Scotty, what are your thoughts on what he can bring? Yeah, uh, tall, bit wiry, but at one ninety three, big enough. Um, hey. Let's go! Thank you, Fatal Gamble, for gifting us a sub to wreck. Another hand. Thank you, Fatal. That. Appreciate that love. Uh, but thank Appreciate you, thank it, you, Fatal. thank you. Um, yeah, Joey Porter Jr. Obviously, uh, the 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 arm length at 34 inches is absolutely insane. Uh, four four six, not good enough. You know, upper tier. Um, and uh, you know, he is the son of a guy that had a successful career in the NFL. I'm decently successful, you know, for a stealer, I guess. True. Um, he, Chris, he allowed just 3.7 yards per passing attempt as the primary defender in 2022, which is fifth in all of college football, and contested 76% of his passes thrown his way, which is fourth in all of college football. He did not give up a single touchdown in 2022. Um, so the production's there. The size is there. The 
you know being a the son of a you know former great is there so the pedigree is there um his you know his his lateral quickness is is at times a little stiff on the transition um but i mean there's a lot to like and and this guy's gonna go top you know certainly top 20 i'd be shocked if he wasn't in the top 20 and even you know likely top 15 in this draft um super talented guy that yeah you know there are some that that have first i feel like most have these other two guys slightly in front of him but slightly doc says he would be a good ad for corner for the steelers oh weird 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 <laughs> didn't make that connection yeah uh that connection's certainly been made uh for sure <laughs> uh all right next up we have devon witherspoon corner illinois six foot 181 four four two forty we have a player comp to jair uh jair alexander so yeah uh so Witherspoon is going to be a first round pick potentially. Um, there, there's no reason why he should drop to the second round, but crazier things have happened. Played well for Illinois in 2022, 40 tackles, three interceptions, 14 pass breakups. Um, he has skills that he, he has skills in that he can run the route and prevent separation. Uh, very, very good at that. He's got good instincts. He can attack the ball. He has physicality. I think size is something that some people have mentioned they are a little bit uh, concerned with here when it comes to his just physical um, uh, just attributes. But given how physical he is, I think he can still outweigh some of those uh, size restrictions that people think he might have. Um, and he did not work out at the combine. So here you go. You have him at number here, number two, Scotty. Yeah. Uh, incredibly highly highly productive at illinois this guy he's got the dog in him like yes his size is probably why he's not number one for me um because at six foot 181 it's not it's not tiny but there are some teams that might be like ah uh, you might have to play him a little more in the slot and maybe not on the outside at times um but everything he does everything well chris like there's not a thing uh he's instinctive he's physical um he he's able to you know the lateral quickness is there he can play press he can play off he can play zone he can play man he can play inside he can play outside he literally can do it all chris um he gave up an fbs best 25.3 nfl passer rating when targeted uh last season chris best corner in all of fbs um college football last year when being targeted in, in the big 10 so he wasn't playing against slouches necessarily so um this guy's gonna go in my mind top 10 uh he could be he could be uh, you know i've seen a lot of people have him at number one him and uh, our number one guy here are kind of neck and neck and back and forth on who you prefer but um if he becomes a jair alexander like that would be an absolutely great top 10 pick um one of the best corners in the league uh, he does literally everything well your one knock is like he's not super big hey he's got that dog in him though he got that dog he's got that dog uh so yeah i mean i think he can be an immediate day one impact 100 percent. so you know we'll see where he ends up dropping to in the first round but either way you're getting some great value here later on in uh you know pick what maybe 20 yeah. to 30 no no he's going you think he's you think, I think he's going top 10 you think he'll go top 10 okay all right I do okay well there you go uh number one christian gonzalez christian gonzalez comes in at number one corner out of oregon 6'1 197 4 3 8 40 you have a player comp to aj terrell at you know, he is impressing a lot of people. Uh, so starting from his 2021 tape, continuing to 2022, I mean, he did not have an interception. So a lot of NFL evaluators wanted to see how to, like, you know, evaluate him with ball skills and things along those lines. But he's a big corner, fast. Well, athletic. He, did, he didn't have a wider or an interception until 2022. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Um, yeah. So, he's fast, athletic, able to run route prevention. He could prevent route running um, and separation. I mean, some people say he has the best skill set of any corner in this draft. Um, they they want to see a little bit more uh, fight and competitiveness out of him from, from some sources that have evaluated him. But uh, overall, he's a number one corner in this draft and helped himself at the combine with incredible workouts showing size, speed, athleticism. Um, he started at, at Colorado. You told me this a little bit earlier, Ed, and I wasn't, I, mm-hmm. I, I didn't remember this, but he started at Colorado before transferring to Oregon um, in 2022 with the ducks. He had 50 tackles, four interceptions and seven passes broken up. Um, so, I mean, he's definitely a guy that will show out in the NFL. Yep. Just another great buff, Chris. Another they have had some cornerbacks throughout the years that have been um pretty pretty decent. Jimmy Smith back in the day, Chidobi Awuzie uh in the NFL currently. Anyway, uh, getting off track there. Christian Gonzalez is everything you want a corner, Chris. Um elite athleticism, 43840, uh, 98th percentile in vertical, 95th in broad jump. Um an absolute freak, confident, 32-inch arms. He's long. He's 197, so he's got, you know, he's big, um, aggressive. He does literally, I mean, there's nothing, uh, just like Witherspoon. Uh, to me, he gets the nod over Witherspoon because he, of the of his size. Um, he's, I, I think, he's a guy you want to play man coverage with his athletic ability and mostly pressing like he he's at his best when he's up on the line and press coverage um getting his hands immediately on the wide receivers breaking their route off um and getting them off timing jamming those guys at the wide receiver or at the uh line of scrimmage so he, he he's okay in off man coverage and in playing zone he can do all those things i think his best trait though is playing press coverage um at the line his biggest question mark was yeah like his playmaking skills his ability to you know, get the get the turnover, uh, make a play on the ball. But he did get the four interceptions this year for Oregon, so showed that he could do that. Um, to me, he's also going to be a, a top ten pick. Uh, I think Rack earlier was like we're talking about Witherspoon. At the very least, Witherspoon will be a top sixteen pick. I wonder who picks at sixteen, Chris. I'd have to look that up. Um, but it might be Rex team. Might be Rex team. So we're seventeen. Um, oh, you're seventeen. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to get him. He's going to go way uh, before that's us. That's what you're trying to say before. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree. Witherspoon and, and Gonzalez will certainly be gone, and maybe maybe Porter Jr. is there, maybe not. But um, those three guys have the potential to be gone before you guys pick at 17, but we'll see. Uh, but nothing about this kid's game should cause anybody any pause. Like, tremendous asset to a team and uh, when corners all as important as it is chris um i expect him to go top 10 it's gonna be a big pickup i'll tell you that uh so there you have it there we have covered tonight all our top eight wide receivers and our top eight corners that we are looking to keep an eye on in this year's draft lot to look at a lot of you know positives and negatives with some of these guys but either way I mean, it's going to be interesting to see how they pan out over the course of their NFL careers, especially early on. And we are going to continue this with more breakdowns 